Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. Uh, the story of the January 6th committee hearing so far has been, well, it's a story of a lot of things, but a story about human beings facing high stakes ethical tests, very high stakes tests, and how they respond to being squeezed and pressured by the most powerful man on earth. We saw that on stark display yesterday. We heard testimony from three Republicans who hold key positions of power in their home states. Those three men, all conservatives, all of whom voted for Donald Trump, resisted pressure from the ex-president and his allies to help overturn the 2020 election. Some of the most compelling testimony came from a man named Rusty Bowers, who is the sitting Arizona Speaker of the House. Arizona, of course, one of the few states that decided the election going for Joe Biden by about 10,000 votes. Yesterday, Speaker Bowers described the extraordinary campaign he was subjected to, trying to coerce him into overthrowing that result. It began shortly after the election with a phone call from Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani claiming to have proof of fraud in Arizona. They wanted Speaker Bowers to hold a hearing on this alleged evidence. The ones I remember were first the, that we would hold, that I would allow an official committee at, at the Capitol so that they could hear this evidence and that we could take action thereafter. Um, and I refused. I said, up to that time, the, the circus, I called it a circus, had been brewing with uh, lots of demonstrations, both at the counting center, at the Capitol, and other places. And I didn't want to have that in the House. I, I did not feel that the evidence, granted in its absence, merited a hearing, and I didn't want to be used as a pawn. Of course, none of that evidence ever turned up, despite requests from Bowers to see it. But the requests from Trump and allies continued. Trump and Giuliani told Bowers that they wanted the Arizona legislature to remove the electors for Joe Biden and replace them with electors for Donald Trump. We know that in pursuit of this plot, a group of Trump supporters in Arizona eventually went so far as to send a fake slate of electors to the National Archives. But Bowers, again, refused to get involved, citing his oath to the Constitution and his faith. And I said, look, you are asking me to do something that is counter to my oath when I swore to the Constitution to uphold it. And I also swore to the Constitution and the laws of the state of Arizona. And it is a tenet of my faith that the Constitution is divinely inspired of my most basic foundational beliefs. And so for me to do that because somebody just asked me to is foreign to my very being. I, I, I will not do it. Now, Speaker Bowers continued to face pressure, especially from Rudy Giuliani, as Trump and his people spread the big lie across the country. And in early December, adherence to that lie occupied the Arizona House of Representatives building looking for Bowers. Committee member Adam Schiff revealed this new video. This is previously undisclosed video of protesters illegally entering and refusing to leave the building. One of the individuals prominently shown in this video is Jacob Chansley. Perhaps better known as the QAnon shaman, this rioter entered the Capitol on January 6th, was photographed leaving a threatening note on the dais in the U.S. Senate chamber, and was ultimately sentenced to 41 months in prison after pleading guilty to obstruction of an official proceeding. Other protesters who occupied the Arizona House of Representatives building included, included Proud Boys, while men armed with rifles stood just outside the entrance. I understand these protesters were calling for you by name, Speaker Bowers. Is that correct? That is correct. Between then and the morning of January 6th, Rusty Bowers fielded more calls. Calls from Donald Trump. Trump's lawyer, the man who co-wrote uh, wrote the coup memo, John Eastman, and Republican Congressman Andy Biggs of Arizona. And they all wanted the same thing. They all wanted Speaker Bowers to violate, in his words, his oath of office and break the law and help Donald Trump remain in power. And he refused every time. But the threats ramped up. We received, um, my secretaries would say, in excess of 20,000 emails and tens of thousands of voicemails and texts, which saturated our offices and we were unable to work, at least communicate. 
Threatening behavior then spread to the speaker's home, where it continued until recently. We have various groups come by, and they have had um, video panel trucks with videos of me proclaiming me to be a pedophile and a pervert and a corrupt and politician and blaring uh, loudspeakers in my neighborhood and leaving literature both on my property but arguing and threatening with neighbors and with myself. There was a, one gentleman that had the three bars on his chest and he had a pistol and was threatening my neighbor. This was all going on outside Rusty Bauer's home in Arizona, while inside that same home, his daughter was dying. We had a daughter who was gravely ill, who was upset by what was happening outside. And my wife, that was a valiant person, very, very strong quiet, very strong woman. So it was disturbing. It was disturbing. Bowers' daughter, Casey Bowers, died on January 8th, 2021. The following month, in February, the far-right Patriot Party of Arizona launched a recall effort against Speaker Bowers for refusing the coup. The recall eventually failed in June due to a technical flaw, but Bowers is term limited in the Arizona House, his position now. So this year he's running for the state Senate and he faces a challenger in the Republican primary who says the 2020 election was stolen. As we look back at what we've seen and heard over four committee hearings, Rusty Bowers embodies a key part of this story because there were a few people, more than a handful, a few people faced with a great moral test who acted with integrity, and ultimately, that's what saved our democracy in the end. But the other part of the story is that the Republican Party as a whole, as an institution in American political life, is a continuing threat to the Republic, even if some of its members did the right thing when called to against great odds and great pressure. And Mr. Bowers summed that all up when after that testimony he gave, he told the Associated Press that despite everything that happened to him and his family and his community and the assault on the Capitol on January 6th, he would vote for Trump again. Quote, if he is the nominee, if he was up against Biden, I'd vote for him again, simply because what he did the first time before in COVID was so good for the country. In my view, it was great. Maybe that's posturing, but you know what? I believe him. I believe him. Mitch McConnell has said the same thing. I believe him. So is Bill Barr. I believe Bill Barr. That's it in a nutshell, the problem that we all face. The distance between the genuine individual integrity that Rusty Bowers showed and the nature of this broader force that no one, not even Donald Trump, really truly controls. Because in the end, the whole is greater and worse than the sum of its parts. And the whole really is, right now, a mortal threat to our democracy.